Good morning. You get me first thing in the morning. I've got my Snoopy pajama top on. One of my last couple of days here in Florida before I head back up to New York and uh, have successfully spent a few days, a um, few weeks actually here in Florida and really enjoying myself and spending some time with my third son uh, before he moves up to Tallahassee and I head back home. I was pondering this morning and I felt inspired. Oh my God, there's so many birds just outside on the porch just chit-chatting this morning and I love the sound. That's what I love about um, this particular area is I can keep the doors open and oh my God, I can hear so much nature right in the middle of winter. And for being a New Yorker, that's something interesting. So um, I had this thought this morning and I thought I would share it with you. It's it's offending me. It's like irritating me. It's rubbing up against me. And I love when that happens because I kind of feel like it's like sandpaper smoothing me off. There's an area that's rough and edgy. And this particular way of uh, mm, agreeing with this thought that's coming up is a way of um, mm, smoothing some rough edges. So here it is. There is something in my life, a couple of things in my life that before I left to go back to New York, I wanted to make sure that I had succeeded at, that I had accomplished. And um, I've done a lot while I'm here. I've done a lot of uh, connecting in with the I am presence and being still. And um, a lot harder than you think to, to stop and still and quiet and find that peace. Um, but I, I feel quite practiced at it. But there's a couple of things that my mind wanted to have happen that didn't happen. And so I'm sitting here wrestling with, it should have been different. It should have been, I'm journaling, thinking, I should have, I should have been able to, and all of a sudden I realize, oh my God, I'm shooting on myself. That's interesting. So um, I began to think about the life of Jesus, which always speaks to me. And the idea that he's standing there all shackled and Pontius Pilate says to him, listen, dude, you better start talking because um, I have the power to uh, kill you, you know, to send you to the people, to do this, to do that. Like, I got, I got power, dude. You're going to want to start, you know, talking to me, bowing before me or whatever. And Jesus report, uh, responds like this. You have the power that I give you. You have the power from above. You, you only have the power that I, I allow you to have. Nobody takes my life from me. I offer it freely. Like you are not gonna find victim consciousness. But there was more. It wasn't just that there wasn't a victim consciousness. I wrote in my journal, he was completely dispassionate and unattached to the outcome. He did not feel a victim of his crucifixion. He said, this is a cup to be received by my father in heaven. This is, this is beyond acceptance, I wrote, into allowance with gratitude. He had no resistance whatsoever. And so as I pondered that, I realized I was being challenged to come out of, of this way of thinking. This is the life that I want to create. This is what I deserve. This is what should be happening. This is what feels right to me. This is my vision for the future and my heart's desire. Coming out of that and into a frequency of, and I want to, I'm holding my phone, so I'll try to do it with one hand. I agree and receive the life that is unfolding for me, through me, and I know that it is for the highest timeline of the collective. So not only do I accept it, accept like a burden, but I allow it and receive it with gratitude, expansion, as if it's exactly 
what is meant to be happening. I don't fight it. I don't look at it as wrong. And so when it came to kind of being frustrated that these couple of things didn't manifest, I started realizing I'm resisting the fact that they didn't manifest. And in that resistance, I'm thinking this is wrong, this is wrong. And what if I could requalify that, create a new narrative in the story and say, oh no, 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 this is exactly what's supposed to be happening. This is what's unfolding for me, through me, so it must be for the best. And in this way of, quote unquote, laying down my life, it is surrendered, but it's not sacrificial in that it's my desire to live in love's frequency. And sacrificial has this idea of victim, you know, someone prospers and somebody suffers. So my life isn't sacrificial, it's just surrendered. This is, if this is what is trying to happen, this is what I want to have happen. If this is the baby that's being birthed, this is the baby that I desire to have birthed. Even if in the birthing of it and the seeing of it, it's like, mm, this isn't quite the baby I was thinking. It reminds me of, I remember when I found out that my first three sons were um, autistic spectrum. And someone sent me um, a poem by Irma Bombeck about arriving in Holland. And I still get kind of emotional about it. It's a poem about this woman who's on a plane. She's all excited, she's, all pl she's got her babble for Italy. She just knows that she's gonna land in Italy. She's got all of her itinerary for going to uh, Florence and um, Tuscany and Rome and all the other fun things. She's off to the island of Capri and she's got all the fun things that she's gonna be doing and she's all prepared for Italy. The plane lands and she's in Holland. And she says, I guess that Holland is where I'm supposed to be. So I'm just gonna make the best of it. Now I have to admit, it's not Italy. It's not how I planned it. But in the meantime, I'm gonna be grateful for Holland and see that maybe Holland has for me things that I can only get in Holland that I wouldn't be able to get in Italy. And so Holland is the best place I'm supposed to be. And I remember receiving that poem and it really spoke to me because I remember thinking, wow, Three autistic kids, this isn't the life I'd planned. This is freaking hard. And yet, I look back on it and I think, having those three kids was the best thing that ever happened to me. Now, in the middle of it, I, I was exhausted. I don't know if I was thinking this is right or wrong. I think I was just freaking tired. <laughs> but I can think of the situation with my dad. In the middle of it, I wanted it to change. I wanted him to change. I wanted the situation to change. It had to be different, and it didn't. And when I stopped resisting what it was and allowed it to be, all of a sudden, it's like the best parts of this most difficult situation presented themselves. I couldn't see how beautiful it actually was for me when I was thinking it should be different, when I was resisting it, when I was saying, go away, you're not what's supposed to be here. You're the wrong guest, go away. And yet this guest kept on knocking on my door going, I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to be here. And when I finally let this guest in and started conversing and getting to know this guest, I started to realize, wow, you are exactly who it is I'm supposed to be with in this period of time. <sighs> so that's what I was thinking about this morning as I get ready to start packing and driving back up north is that rather than feeling so badly that the things that I had put on my list of things to do and to accomplish 
that didn't get done and accomplished, it's not failure. Very often it's redirection. I think of the two things specifically that I'm like, damn. And then I think, hmm, maybe not today, but maybe tomorrow or sometime in the future, I'm going to be able to look back and go, oh my God, that was the best guest that could have arrived at that time. That's exactly what I needed. Hmm. How's this land for you? Does it feel like sandpaper like it does for me? I'm like, mmm. <laughs> Smooth me off in this particular rough patch. But I wouldn't want it any other way. Mmm. Uncomfortable? Oh, hell yeah. Mmm. but quite the adventure. My name is Lisa and I am Energy Gal and I work one-on-one -on -one with clients. And very often I don't wear my glasses with my hair up, but you know, sometimes you're gonna catch me that way because this is me. <laughs> and uh, I'm absolutely passionate about knowing power, the power that I am, that I am presence. And then once I know that for myself, I think, oh my goodness, I want everybody to know that. Because we are one, and when, when I heal, you heal, and when you heal, I heal, and together we heal. There are links below. Everybody have a wonderful day, and I hope you find peace and power in your moments.